Hey everyone, welcome back to the Shed of Solitude. I'm Mike Rondo. Good to be back in the Shed of Solitude. I just made a post on my community page there, or tab, whatever you want to call it, on YouTube. Uh, it is a bit chilly. It was 35 degrees. We're up to 10 degrees, 45 degrees, so that's not too bad. But uh, tonight, I'm feeling a little Christmassy, and by the way, I'll, I'll shut the lights off in a minute, get really in the mood. But uh, we're doing the Sutliff Christmas Spice Blend is uh, what we'll be smoking. And I can kind of smell it a bit, and it smells really cinnamony-ish. smells good. Um, and of course, I thought, I was looking at my pipe rack, and I'm like, what pipe do I want to break out tonight? And I decided to go with the Savinelli 2001, uh, 2001, 2021 uh, Christmas pipe. Wow, 2001. Wow, that was a, that was a rough year. Anyway, um, Anyway, let's, uh, let's dim the lights here, get a little Christmassy, although we don't, oh, that might be too dark. Uh, well, anyway, you, you only need to hear me. You don't need to look at my mug. All right, let's, uh, let's get the knife out here, cut the little tab, and get a, a tin note here. There we go. All right, let's see. This is, uh... Oh wow, this is uh, wow, this is packed pretty tight. Uh, Moisture-wise, not as goopy as I thought, not as wet as I thought, but still kind of wet. It smells. Let's kind of. Well, it's hard to tell with these bags. These bags kind of. Hmm. 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 I don't know. It's it's very cinnamon, uh, yuletide log kind of smell. Um, I want to say a little bit of like a cinnamon tea kind of thing going there. Or what's the drink there? Is it cinnamon tea? I don't know. What is a Christmas? I don't know why it's escaping my mind right now. But um, a little bit more uh, tacky on the fingers. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so I might have to let this dry out a little bit. Um, interesting. All right, well, the tin note's good. It's like a, from what I gather, not that this is tin, this is a bag. Very cinnamon spice. Maybe like thermoflu. I don't know if that that might sound weird. Hmm. That a bit of Play-Doh. That I'm gonna guess is black Cavendish in here, which is what that Play-Doh smell is. But I'm gonna find out. I'll go to Tobacco Reviews and check that out. All right. Well, I'll be back. I'm gonna pack my pipe. I'm gonna let this probably dry out for like. 10, 15 minutes or so, and I'll be back, uh, and I'll fix this lighting situation and uh, whatnot. So, anyway, stay tuned. All right, we are back. Now, I've taken liberty of uh, doing the false light and smoking it for about 10 minutes now, uh, and it smells great. It's, I've still got that cinnamon kind of smell, but almost like, uh, like you're making tea and you throw a cinnamon stick in there. Uh, that that kind of thing, like a warm, hot cinnamon cider thing going on, uh, and that's a good thing. By the way, my favorite lighter. Almost recovered. And. I have to say, I checked tobacco reviews. I'm pretty pleased that I was able to pick out the black Cavendish. Um, and of course, it's Virginia and Burley, which that combination is really, I love that combination. Now, they say caramel 
uh, cinnamon and vanilla. I get more cinnamon. Um, but as I take a few puffs in, like if I do this, like sip a few, I get that caramel taste a little bit, not much. I would say the smoke is more of a vanilla smell. And I got to say, I let this dry out for 10 minutes and it's doing pretty good for considering how wet it was. Um, I'll show you guys some of that right there. Uh, it's hard to see with my lighting choice tonight, but it's, uh, let me just show you how sticky it is. It's kind of clumpy like that. So <laughs> I just got some on my light over here. Um, so that's what that is. Not bad. Um, I'm also trying this with this tonight, Heretic Chocolate uh, Hazelnut Porter. I don't know how well this combo is going to go, but it can't be too bad. I would say, well, this is good first off. It's a porter. Stouts and porter are kind of like my favorite. Um, and I didn't, do you ever have this? You're going through the liquor store and you're checking things out and you're like, I don't know what the hell I want. Um, but I ended up landing on this. I didn't want uh, my traditional yingling, you know, six pack or 12 pack. Uh, I was like, I just want one good special beer. So I went with this. Um, what else? I would imagine eggnog is probably probably the drink that would go with this one and of course eggnog with the eggnog uh, blend I tried last time probably ideal hmm. I believe Mark and R.I. or Signal Man Tony said this is one of their favorite Christmas blends I can see why. Mm. It is very good. Then again, I'm not surprised because it's Sutliff. Um, I enjoy this. I don't know where this will fall on my Christmas blend core that's about to happen. It's funny because initially I was saying to myself, I was like, I think I like eggnog better. But as I have this and go down further in the bowl, this seems to be edging it out. So now I'm getting more caramel, vanilla, just a hint of vanilla. But this is very, very nice. Um, what else is going on? Uh, so I got a package... It's a Thursday, but I found it Friday. It was on the table. They left it on the table. I didn't realize it was there. Uh, I got it from Ford, uh, the Bronco department, if you will. They sent me another gift, uh, which I'll show probably in two videos from now. So I opened it up, and it was a flag with the Bronco logo on it. It's a really nice flag. And I'm like, well, I could use another flag in the shed. So I did that. I got more flag hooks because I actually bought a Jeep flag. I feel like I gotta balance it out because I am a Jeep guy at heart. I have a Jeep, obviously I have the Gladiator. I've had multiple Jeeps, I love Jeep. Uh, I just think the Bronco is fun and I, I enjoy it. I like competition anyway, but uh, my heart is with the, with the Jeep. But I'm gonna put up the, the Bronco because I need to, the, 
the wall where uh, the bench is in the library. I need to cover that up, and those two flags should do a good number at covering that up. So I'll show that in like two videos from now. I just think it's funny. Ford keeps trying to lure me over with these gifts that they're giving. Um, I really wish Jeep would take a uh, uh, notice of that and kind of just, you know, hey, there you go. Oh, we're up to 49 degrees. We're almost up to 50. 49.8. I got both heaters going. I just had someone, before I came back, comment on the uh, the channel because I was in the shed and they said, you're going to need to break out the big guns for that. Um, for the most part, what I have for a setup works. Um, the Mr. Buddy does put out a lot and if it's really cold, I can put them right underneath here and the heat just kind of traps in here. Again, like I say, I get this little heat bubble around me with this and this, and it kind of just forms this little cocoon for me, which works out really well. Um, however, I have flirted with the idea of getting another Mr. Buddy for those really cold nights, but I'm not typically out here when it, once it goes past 10 degrees. Um, at that point, it's kind of like, all right, I got to surrender, right? Unless I really want a pipe. So I thought, well... I'm doing more videos now on those cold nights. I'd like to come out here and have a uh, smoke a pipe and, and do a video in that and kind of show you all how I survive in, in the extreme cold. Uh, and I did think another heater wouldn't be a bad option because this isn't bad, but the problem with this one, and again, I'll do a review on this particular model, is once it goes down below, if I'm right, trying to remember, I think 20 degrees, it doesn't, it struggles to kind of throw out any heat. But you throw on the Mr. Buddy, you heat up the temperature, and it gets up to maybe, I want to say, 26, 27 degrees. This will kick on and blow that heat out again. Um, so it does. this does struggle more than that. That you could leave out, and it's not a problem. But, uh, yeah, if it gets really cold, I just I get the blankets and all that stuff, and I'm, I'm nice snug in a bug. In here and it's not too bad um, even on those cold nights I've been in here the coldest I think was minus three or five uh, and that was before I did YouTube and that was fun not a fan of it um, I had the heater it worked out okay but um, still even then it's kind of like yeah maybe you should just wait a day I mean, unless, <laughs> unless it's been like a week of minus five and you need your pipe, at that point I'd say, oh, well, I'm just going out there anyway. But the average temperature in the shed when I'm out here most of the winter from now till March, probably at night, probably 23 to 32 degrees. Um, and then you get some of those warm nights in the 40s, so... For the most part, it gets comfortable with the heaters, and it's not too bad. <laughs> Before I came out here, I was watching this, because uh, some of you know I'm into true crime, and I, I hope you guys don't mind me throwing out a little chat while I smoke the pipe here. I don't know if it was out of boredom or whatever. Uh, I'm into true crime, so I was looking for a true crime document uh a doc, right? So I've, I've seen this one for, I think, almost two years. It came out in like, or oh, maybe 2000 it came out. 2020, I think it came out, or 2019. So for the last few years, I've seen it, and for some reason it just didn't appeal to me. I, I knew the case. Um, it's about the guy with the pizza bomber with the collar on his neck. Uh, that took place in 2004, if I remember right, from the documentary. Um... And it was just a bizarre case. I'm typically into the serial killer crimes. That's where I go. But this was like, all right, well, I'll try it. See what happens. It's only four episodes. Not a big commitment. And wow, what a bizarre, twisted, weird case, man, when you get into the weeds of that. Um, wow, that's all I can say. It's, it's like you couldn't write a movie as good as that. So if you were... 
you, it's worth checking out if you're into true crime. You're bored one night, uh, you want to check it out, or maybe you've seen it already. It's it's a wild ride, I'll say that. It, it's kind of like Tiger King-ish, but probably better, I would say. And of course, the Savinelli pipe is doing well. The only knock is it's a 6mm filter. I need my 9. The airflow in a 9 is just so much better for me. And I, of course, it's a white elephant filter I put in here. Because I think white elephant filters are probably my favorite filters. The Savinelli ones, they're alright, but... The white elephant ones, I think, are better. That's just my opinion. Of course, I did like the Big Ben. Is it Big Ben? But you can't get them for some reason. But this is delightful. Now, this is like a, a cinnamon stick you kind of put it on tea or like the decorative cinnamon stick you put on a wreath or something kind of going but not as strong as that it's kind of it's pleasant it's not like punch you in the face kind of stuff it's 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 good This is definitely a winner. I think I'm, I'm glad I went with the four ounce bag, but now I wish I got more, like like an eight ounce bag or something like that. This is uh, I might be smoking quite a bit of this from now until the end of the year. I think I packed this pipe a little too tight. But that cinnamon spice right there. I like it. Oh yeah, see now that... That was a bit of strong cinnamon going on there. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that because it's been pretty mellow. Hmm. Well, I certainly recommend getting some of this. Uh, my fellow aromatic friends, uh, even non-aromatic guys or gals, I think you'd find this pretty enjoyable if you're not big into aromatics. Like, I don't think this is one that's going to make you... I don't get, like, a chemical kind of taste. Um, it'll be interesting a year from now when I try this if I'll get that chemical taste, like the like some of the Boswells that I've had. Um, and I'm interested to try the Christmas, cook, Christmas cookie that I got from last year and compare it to this year and see if I get the chemical test taste that I got from the bear blend that I have uh, and even the maple one that I have from them. Kind of a chemical taste. But that, in all fairness, not to knock Boswell or anything because I love their tobaccos, I've had that out in the shed. So that could be a my thing, right? That could be my problem. Now, most of my tobaccos I've moved, obviously, into the house. Um, the ones that are stored, you know, more springtime kind of things and my loose bags and stuff. So that's all inside. The ones I got out here, more the winter blends are the ones I'm going to smoke within the next month. And then I'll rotate them in and, you know, there will be less and less. So in any case, plus I'm doing a scientific experiment to see if any of this 
really matters, and I don't know. We'll find out. But I think it did with the Boswell blends because I left them in the tins. Had I jarred them, which I did with the Christmas cookie, I bet you the Christmas cookie won't be stale, if you will. Uh, I think it'll be fine. But we're going to find out soon anyway. Uh, but definitely this right here, I don't want to say it's... I would say it's almost like the perfect Christmas blend in the sense that it's not overpowering like Christmas cookie or or some of the other blends. It's a, this is a very casual, enjoyable Christmas blend. You could take uh, going on a, a lunt, sitting on a park bench at Christmas time, uh, going outdoors to see the Christmas tree lighting, uh, ice skating, that type of thing. I think this is perfect for that, like around town kind of pipe uh, to go, other than the other ones. I think this is a good balance uh, of, of the aromas and the smoke and all that stuff. It's not over the top like some of the other blends uh, around Christmas time. So I think this is almost like socially the perfect Christmas blend, if you will. So far. we I don't know. We'll see when I... I haven't had those blends in oh, about a year. And the other one, the Three Kings there, I haven't had since I got it. When did I get that? September or August? I don't know. It's been a while. So we'll see when we get there. But anyway... I'm going to take off. Thanks for joining me. I wasn't even going to do a video tonight. I was kind of just going to chill out again. I wasn't even going to come into the shed tonight, but I felt compelled. You know, I just, I was like, I, I got to go have that, that blend. I got to try that. And then like last night, uh, and I, I'll leave after this, but I think it's very important, us shed guys and gals and uh, pipe smokers, cigar smokers that have sheds or garages in the winter that do YouTube, I should say, or some kind of content creating. Sometimes it's good to just keep the camera off and just enjoy the pipe, the relaxation of it, and not do a video for the sake of doing a video. So make sure you enjoy your shed if you're a YouTube pipe smoker. Um, enjoy your shed for what it really is and, you know, keep it in perspective, I guess, is what I'm saying. But anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you for joining me. Um, this has been fun. I like this blend. I recommend it. Curious to what you guys would think about this blend. I know a few of you have already said it's one of your favorite Christmas blends. So anyway, get back to me. I'll see you guys soon.